folks, Dave here at Thunder Mesa Studio, where this week I'm building the Calico Mine Company structure. Like the rest of the mountain, my Calico Mine Company is inspired by the Knott's Berry Farm original. I did take some liberties with the dimensions and placed doors and windows where they would make more sense for a mine warehouse rather than a ride load building. Before building and installing my Calico Mine Company structure, there was a little prep work that needed doing on the layout. I ran some feeder wires below the scenery to connect with the 9 volt power bus recently added behind the backdrop for LED lighting effects on Calico Mountain. I tested the circuit with an LED to make sure it would work and then turned my attention to the platform that my structure would sit on. The first step was a basic box made of black foam core held together with some Eileen's tacky glue. While keeping a close eye on clearances, I clad the foam core with stained and weathered copy stir sticks with upright bracing made from basswood 2x6s. For a nice level surface, I made an illustration board base to match the footprint of my structure, and then I decked the rest of the platform with more copy stir sticks, cut and fitted to size. And then I was just about ready to start on the building itself. Now over here I have all of the laser cut parts that I created for the Calico Mine Building. Uh, most of them are 1 inch thick basswood, uh, except for the parts that won't show, which I did out of uh, illustration board. Those will be in the back and you won't see them. And all that's left of <laughs> the mock-up that I created, it pretty much got destroyed uh, while I was measuring and marking for the different uh, parts. And this really shows you the value of a mock-up. I was able to get parts that would fit exactly in the space I had because I had already built it. I had already built this and made sure that it fit. And then I just took the measurements off of this to create my, uh, my laser cut parts. Uh, I also have a couple of uh, Titchy Train Group styrene windows that I'm gonna be using. These are uh, four over four double hung O scale windows. And uh, the first thing to do, I think, is to stain all of this with the same stain that I used on the uh, platform. Uh, the Calico Mine building at Knott's is pretty much just bare wood <laughs> stained, uh, very realistic in that way. Uh, the trim has a little paint on it, but uh, everything else is uh, kind of bare weathered wood. So we're going to go for that look uh, by staining all of these pieces now. One thing, uh, actually, before I start staining, I wanted to show you uh, for this long front wall, I had to create it as two separate pieces because the narrowness of the basswood I was working it with and I, the grain was to go in this direction. So I created these two pieces that fit together like that. Now, before I stain this, I think I want to assemble these two pieces and put some bracing on the back. This is uh, uh, O scale eight by eight we'll be using for bracing. And that'll keep this from warping and keep these pieces matched up. Uh, while the stain dries. All right, now while the glue on the back of this dries, I can uh, remove all of these from the backing card. And these are the uh, porch rafters that are going to hold up the big awning over the tracks. Get those taken out and I can start staining everything. And you probably noticed that I did not stain the doors uh, with the uh, India ink mixture. And that's because on the prototype, on the Calico Mine Building, the doors and the trim are all painted dark brown. So I'm going to uh, use some Minwax Dark Walnut on all the doors and trim to give them that dark brown color. Okay, 
I think I'm ready to start putting these walls together. Now for these illustration board walls that aren't going to show on the model, I just went ahead and painted them a flat dark brown. So, start with, I think I'll start with this back wall. And this one goes this way. Like that, yeah. I'll put that in place first. Gonna add some more bracing to the interior. Make everything nice and square. I'm about ready to install this little bump out here on the side, but before I do. I decided that I want the light from the interior to come through this window, which was kind of a last minute <laughs> addition. So I'm going to cut, I'm going to cut out this uh, little square here so the light can come through. structure is designed to have board and batten siding just like the prototype and uh, laser engraved into the sides here are these nine inch wide boards and I just got through staining up a whole bunch of one by two battens which will go over those um, but before I do that I want to trim out these doors and install the windows and maybe trim the corners too because that will make it a lot easier uh, to install the battens uh, to the correct length because they're going to butt up right up against the door trim. So I'm going to do the doors now including the Z braces on the doors and uh, with some uh, scale one by fours that I've just stained up with that dark walnut to match. So let's do that. And then we can uh, move on. Okay, next I'm going to do the corner trim. These are one by sixes. And these are just staying the same color as the walls. Okay, now I'm ready to start putting the battens on, which is probably going to be one of the most time-consuming parts of this whole build. Um, I'm going to wait on installing the windows, and I'll just dry fit those in because I don't want them to get scuffed up while I'm working on the building. So now I'm just go around and start fitting these one by two battens all the way around the structure.
do the windows. I'm giving them a quick paint job to try and match the doors as well as I can. And I uh, might do a little more on that, but that'll all tie together in the weathering. I just painted them a, a matte dark brown and then dry brushed on some burnt sienna and uh, a little some lighter colors like some flesh tones to kind of mimic the look of the, the wooden doors there. And now I'm going to install the glazing. These uh, titchy windows come with the glazing already pre-cut to size, which is handy. And I am fogging the glass by adding some Scotch magic tape to the back side of the panes. So when you look through, you won't be able to see the interior of the structure, which of course in this case is not being modeled. So that's a good way to do that. I'm going to make sure I put the shiny side out. Yeah. To install these, I like to use a little Eileen's Tacky Glue, just a couple of little teeny dabs in the corners is all you need. And the Eileen's dries clear, so you won't be able to see it at all if you accidentally get some on the panes. Well, try not to. I'll just use a little Eileen's to uh, glue the windows into the openings on the model. Next it was time to install the bump out roof and the laser cut rafter tails. The roof is made from 1 32nd inch thick birch plywood with lines scribed every 3 16ths of an inch as a guide for shingles. The shingles are peel and stick real cedar from Crescent Creek models that have been stained a weathered gray with Vallejo acrylics. Laser cut door handles were added and some appropriate signs were printed out and applied to the structure, including this nod to Wendell Bud Hurlbut, creator of Knott's Calico Mine Ride. I made a foam core support for the structure's lighting. That consists of one flickering and one non-flickering yellow LED for the interior and a second flickering LED to be hidden beneath the porch awning. All three are 3 mm LEDs that can work a 9 to 12 volts. Ordinarily, I like to have all of my structures be removable from the layout so I can do maintenance on them and change uh, lights or whatever needs to be done. Uh, but I'm going to make an exception in this case because it's because of this big awning that is going to come out over the tracks. And the easiest way to build that, the best way, I think, is to build it in place on the layout. So this is actually the bottom part of the structure is going to be permanently installed on the layout, but I'm going to make a removable roof, which I've done several times before with my structures, so the roof can pop off and I can still be able to access these uh, LEDs inside if I ever need to change them. Let's build a removable roof. And how I do that is I build an interior structure, usually out of foam core, and then I'll clad it with this 1 32nd inch uh, plywood, which is the actual roofing material that the shingles and everything will go on. But first I have to build this foam core box. All right, now I can install the main structure on the layout. And the first thing I need to do is connect up these wires.
All right, <clears throat> now I can start building this porch awning in place right here. Have to be real careful of the clearances so the locomotives and the cars will fit underneath here. That's one of the main reasons I wanted to build it in place. The first piece of the puzzle is this uh, six by 12 footer, which will act as a support for the, uh, the porch posts on this side of the track. Back over here at the workbench, I've got this laser cut piece from some 1 8 inch thick material. Um, so it's basically a six by 12 and it's a uh, notch to accept these porch rafters, which will come from the building over the track and fit into that notch right there. And all I have to do here is glue into place the four support posts. We'll do that and then we'll see if everything fits over on the layout. Well, I already shingled and weathered the awning roof over at the work table, so now I can just go ahead and glue it into place. The glue on every one of these rafters. ahead and finished off the main roof over at the workbench too, shingling and weathering my usual fashion. The uh, smoke jack is from uh, Wiseman Model Services. And we'll see how it looks. It all goes together here. Let me get it in there. It's kind of a tight fit, but it's supposed to be. Just have a couple more details I want to add before I'll call this finished. I'm going to put some 2x4 trim on the roof eaves and build a little retaining wall back here where this rock wall is. Maybe add a few uh, barrels and other castings to the platform just to clutter it up a little bit. I built a simple retaining wall from 8x8 stock then added some 2x4 trim to the roof edges. On the platform, I added some barrels, a lantern from Berkshire Valley Models, some printed paper dynamite boxes, and a shovel and broom from Wiseman Model Services. You know, sometimes I think I only build these scenes and structures just so I can add all the little details. That's the fun part. And as this project continues, I'll be adding more and more layers of detail to scenes like this. But that's going to do it for this week. Thank you for tuning in, everybody. And uh, I'll see you next time. Keep moving forward. Adios for now. <laughs>